Welcome to part 3 of the Underwater World Chase tutorial by Pearplay. In the previous part we've implemented simplex noise on a tessellated plane by offsetting the vertex positions. In this part we will recalculate the normals so that we get the correct light and shadows displayed on the surface. Let's have a look at what we need to do to recalculate the normals. First of all, we are using a plane. And one of the characteristics of a plane is that all the vertex normals are pointing directly upwards. You can see the normal directions visualized by the white lines. Now looking at the sphere, we can see that the vertex normals are all pointing into different directions. Let's have a closer look at the vertex of the plane. We can see the current normal direction, but in the shader we want to recalculate the normals after we've changed the vertex positions. We can do this by looking at two different offset points related to the current vertex. And the first one is called the tangent of the vertex. Now because this is a plane, the tangent direction is exactly at 1, 0, 0 in the local space of the mesh. If the mesh would be anything else, the tangent would be 90 degrees rotated from the current normal direction. The second direction we need is called the bitangent, which is the cross product of the normal and the tangent direction pointing exactly to 0, 0, 1. We will run the noise calculation on three points in the shader. The original vertex point, the vertex point plus the tangent and the vertex point plus the bitangent. We will then get both the directions toward the two extra calculated points. The cross product of these two vector directions will be the new normal direction to be applied to the vertex. Now let's continue writing out the shader to recalculate the normals because if we turn off the shaded wireframe we can't see anything of the normals and we want to see that so let's write it out. And I will start by showing you how to make this work on just a plane. And once we've got that working, I'll explain how to make this shader work on any mesh. Now we are going to make some changes in the void vert. So I'm going to command this out for a moment. And at the start, I'm going to put the current v.vertex.xyz into a temporary float. So we're going to say a float3 and we'll call this v0 which is going to be the v.vertex.xyz. Now, as I explained before, we need to do this calculation on three different vertex points. So I'm going to create two different vertex points. So let's create a flow three and I'll call this V1. And that is going to be the V0 plus another flow three. And this will have the X offset. And I'll type here an offset of 0.01 in its x direction, 0 in its y and 0 in its z. And the 0 0.01 is just a slightly offset to the right, which is all we need. Now for the next one we need to offset it in its z direction, so let's say flow 3 v2 is going to be v0 plus the flow 3 of 0, 0, 0 0.01. Now we need to apply this noise to the v0, v1 and v2. So let's create a new line and I'm actually going to call this float ns for noise. ns0 is going to be, and I can just copy paste this line here. Let's paste it there. And instead of referencing the feed of vertex, I'm going to reference here the v0.x. And we'll do the same for the y. So we'll say v0.y. And instead of the v.vertex.z, we're going to say the v0.z. Now in the previous part, we've offset the vertex only in its y position. But what we actually want to do is offset it in its normal direction. And we're going to talk to v0.xyz plus this noise 0 multiplied by v.normal. Now another thing is that the noise returns a value between minus 1 and 1. And I kind of want to shift that between 0 and 1. So what we'll do to do that is we're going to say that the noise is going to be plus 1. And we're going to divide that by 2. And if we do that, then it will be between 0 and 1. Now we can simply copy paste these two lines twice. So let's remove these lines and paste, paste. Let's make that a little bit better. There we go. 
and I'll just change the values here. Noise is going to be noise one. We're going to use V1, 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 and we're going to apply V1 to the noise one. And for the noise two, we're going to use the noise two, where this is going to be two, V2, V2, and V2 will be increased by noise two. So now we've applied the same noise to the V0, V1, and V2. And these are the offsets of the tangent and the bitangent. So if we do a cross product on the bitangent and the tangent, we'll get the normal. We'll create a new flow 3 and we'll call this Vn for the normal. And that is going to be the cross product of the V2 minus V0 and the V1 minus V0. Now all that's left is to apply this normal to the V.normal. So we're going to say V.normal is going to be the normalize of the Vn. And of course we also need to set the vertex. So we're going to say V.vertex.xyz is going to be V0. Now I made a little typo here because this should become a flow 3. Now with that in place, let's save the shader and go back to Unity. And back in Unity, you can now see that the normals are all calculated. So when we change the noise scale, we can see also the normals changing. We change the frequency. So it has impact on the light and shadows. And you'll see this a little bit better if we increase the smoothness of the material uh, let's change it to a different color and now you see some really nice results with the light so if i change the light direction you can see that the light has an impact on the new normals now this shader works on the plane but it won't work on any other shape mesh when creating shaders you want to make it as versatile as possible so now let's make this shader work on any mesh and we can do this by requesting the tangent of the vertex in the shader so let's go to app data and we're going to add a new line here and I'm going to input a float4 and call this tangent and that is going to be the tangent of the vertex. And I completely forgot to increase the font size, apologies for that, I will increase the font size a little bit more. Now let's scroll down to the void vert and we're going to use the tangent to calculate our offsets instead of just using 0.01 .01 in the x-axis we're going to use the tangent direction and as we already have the tangent available we can change the equation of v1 so it's going to be v0 plus and let's remove this flow 3 and we're going to change this into using the v.tangent.xyz multiplied by 0.01 .01. Now we don't have the bitangent, so we have to calculate the bitangent. And we can do that by getting the cross product of the normal and the tangent. That's why we needed the tangent. So let's add a new line here and I'm going to declare a new flow 3. And we're going to call this the bitangent. And the bitangent is going to be the cross product of the v.normal to the v.tangent.xyz. And if you're unfamiliar with the cross product, I included a link in the description where the cross product is explained. Now we can use the bitangent in the equation of the V2. So let's change this to use the bitangent multiplied by 0.01. .01. And with that in place, we can save the shader and the shader will now work on any mesh that we apply it to. And for some reason the normals got inverted, so let's go back to the shader and invert them again. And we can simply do that by going to the normalize function and put a minus in front of the Vn. And that will invert the normals that are outputted here. So let's save that shader again, go back to Unity, and now we see the light again. And now because we changed the shader to follow any mesh, we can displace also a sphere. And that will give some really cool results when we increase the frequency. This comes to the end of our work on the ground shader. And of course you could extend the shader to use a texture or a normal map. In the next part we will start working on the underwater post-processing image effect shader.
This tutorial series is made possible by the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you would like to support me creating free Unity tutorials about audiovisuals, algorithms and shaders, you can become a patron as well. You will then get access to all exclusive source file content of the tutorials. Go to patreon.com slash peerplay for more information. Special thanks to Devin the Dude and Derek Vechter. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you would like to stay updated to new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Hope to see you again in the next part. Happy coding!